Okay, so we've got the corner pieces, which was that uh, covenant and Abraham, the nations. Okay, those would be equivalent to the four corners. Now let's fill in the edge pieces. Page 20 in your book, here's the Old Testament in a nutshell. So this is a really, 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 really short overview. We're going to do the whole Old Testament in under 15 minutes. <laughs> section by section, that's all we're going to do. I'm not going to read through these. I've give, actually, I've, this part is a resource for you to keep. As you're reading through the Old Testament, here are, here's what you're reading. These are the books. So the first section is the Torah, or the, sometimes it's called the Pentateuch, or the five books, or the Law of Moses, or the Book of Moses. Um, that's, sorry, that's the first section, the Torah. And it holds uh, primacy of place in, in the Hebrew Scriptures. I mean, Torah is what everything's built upon. Here's, here's actually a Torah scroll. Um, the ones in synagogues are a lot bigger. But this is Torah. This is the Bible that Jesus read. And they would keep it bound in scrolls, even still today if you've been in synagogue, and they would read from it. And there are daily readings, weekly readings. Like this, this is the holy book of God's people that everything else is built on. So Torah in our Old Testament describes, so this describes the first five books in our Old Testament. The Torah is the foundation. Torah is Israel's national charter. Torah, I'll leave this up so if anyone wants to look at it afterwards, you can. Torah is Israel's, who they are, their Declaration of Independence, their Constitution, their laws, all of it together. It's their national identity. It's their covenant. It's the covenant. It's the old covenant. So that's the first section, and you read through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You're reading Torah. Then after that in our Bibles, page 21, we come to the historical books. Now, this is the order of our English Bibles. Jewish Bibles, as we've said, are different. They break it up into Torah, prophets, writings. Our Bibles follow the Greek Septuagint version, how the Jewish, uh, Greek-speaking Jews in Alexandria before the time of Jesus divided or collected scripture. And so in our scriptures, the next, the historical books. And these are everything Joshua uh, all the way through 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. These are the books that tell that whole story that I walked us through a minute ago or, or before the break of Israel being called, Israel going into the land, Israel breaking the covenant, God sending prophets, uh, Israel still breaking the covenant, God sending judgment, God exiling Israel for 70 years, God bringing Israel back from exile and still sending prophets to prepare them for what he was going to do. All of that takes place in these historical books. And then we come in our Bibles to the next, which were the poetic or the wisdom books. So these would be like Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. Uh, these are the books that are they're poetry. They're, they're songs. They're, they don't tell narratives. <clears throat> they're different genres, but they're all kind of grouped under the genre of wisdom literature. These were the writings that may, were to be read and studied to make Israel wise. And wisdom doesn't mean you know a lot. It means you know how to act in situations. That's biblical wisdom, how to be obedient, how to live as a faithful covenant Jew in whatever life throws at you, uh, the ups and the downs. That's wisdom literature. And we can talk more maybe next week in terms of how you interpret, because the, the, it's a different genre, so the interpretations are different. Psalms are not to be read as proclamations of doctrine at a systematic level. They're not. They're worship songs. They're poems. You know, the Song of Songs, it's, it's not a, a story of a couple and their marital woes and, and how they get back on track, even though it's presented that way in a lot of marriage seminars. Song of Song is an erotic sex poem. I mean, that's just what it is. It's a sexy, sexy song. <laughs> Very explicit. The imagery is, again, R-rated. Um, but it's in there. It's to be read. It's to be celebrated. It's to be, you know, it would be read to husband to wife, wife to husband. That would be, it's a celebration in the fullest sense of the physicality and the embodiment that God did when he created us. The Old Testament wisdom literature puts to bed forever the idea that our true reality is the soul and that this body is just a shell. That's Greek thought. That's paganism. The Jews never had that view. The view was, no, a, a soul without a body is, that's not right. That's, that's not salvation. Salvation for the Jews was, would be soul and body together being saved. 
God renewing, raising the dead. Because body is good. Matter is good. Flesh is good. That's what God said after creation. It is good. It's the sin part that's bad, not the physicality part. So you see that in the wisdom literature, um, especially. And then after that come the prophetic books. The prophetic books are all of the prophets, and this is the last section in our Bibles in English, and it's, it's actually two sections. Uh, there's the major prophets, so these would be the ones like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. Uh, Lamentations is there, it's just a little... Uh, conclusion to Jeremiah's book, and then, and, and Daniel would be by some grouped in as a major prophet because his book is longer, and then there are the, the minor prophets, or sometimes they're called the twelve, and they're not minor in importance, they're just minor because they're short. I mean, those are the books that most people have trouble finding because they're tucked away in the middle of the Bible, they're really short, and they have a lot of weird names that we don't know what they're about. Who's Obadiah? Who is Nahum? You know, I didn't even know Zechariah. Who's, what's Zechariah and who's Zephaniah? Are, those aren't the same person. Like, so in Hebrew, those are all one book. It's called the Book of the Twelve. But in English, in our Bibles at least, based on the Septuagint, they're grouped out separately. But that's, that's the Old Testament overview. And, and what you can do is on page 26 of your book, what I've done is I went through and put together Okay, let's say you like to learn the story as a story. And that's what the Old Testament is. Remember how we started the class tonight with that quote by Chris Wright. The Old Testament is more than anything else, it's a story. It's the story of God and how he's relating to all of us. So this is an Old Testament overview, historically speaking. Um, the, the, the chunks are the sections of Israel's history. So the patriarchs is the first section. That's everything from prehistory through creation, the flood, the Tower of Babel. That's all Genesis 1 through 10. Uh, then you get to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's the rest of the book of Genesis. Then there's this big chunk, 400 years, Israel's in slavery. Then comes the exodus and the conquest of where God brings them out of Egypt and into the promised land. And that all happens, the dates at the bottom around 1400 BC or some scholars say 1200 BC. Um, that's what you're reading in those sections. And then after that comes the period of the judges. This is when Israel lived without a king. They were just ruled by these heroes. These, they were called judges, but don't think of like Judge Wapner or Judge Judy. Like these are heroes. These are deliverers of Israel. So <clears throat> these are people, and this is when the books of uh, people like Ruth and Deborah and Gideon, Samson, Samuel, all that's taking place. And then around 1,000 B.C., give or take, is when you come, we come to the monarchy, the united monarchy. In other words, Israel gets a king. And so they have Saul and then David, and then Solomon. And then right after Solomon, Israel splits in two. And there's the northern kingdom uh, called Israel because they were ten of the tribes, and they just kept the name Israel. And then the southern kingdom, Judah. And during those periods, their, their history kind of goes along in two paths, and that's the divided monarchy. So Israel's history at the end comes to an end in 722 B.C. when, when Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom, is destroyed, and the Assyrians take out the northern kingdom. The southern kingdom kind of learns from that a little bit, and they continue on for a little while longer, but then 586, they are destroyed by the Babylonians. All during that time, God had sent them prophets, like Elijah, and then Isaiah, and Jeremiah, like all the prophets, a lot of the prophets you read are happening during that time, so the chronology gets a little hard to follow, which is why a good study Bible or a good Bible handbook helps. Then there's the, the Jerusalem temple is destroyed. 586, boom, Israel, God's judgment falls, and for 70 years they're exiled in Babylon. And that's when you have the uh, stuff you read about in Daniel, and that's what you read in Ezekiel. He was one of the exiles. Um, 70 years. Then God brings them back. They rebuild the temple under Ezra and Nehemiah after God brings them back into the land, and that's the period known as the Second Temple period, Second Temple Judaism. It means that the first temple was the one Solomon built. It got destroyed in 586. They rebuilt it, and they would continue rebuilding it little by little, bit by bit, and finally by the time of Jesus, it would be complete, uh, and it would be known as Herod's temple. But this is, this is the overview, and it's during that last part which ends around 400 B.C., that's when God sent, that's Ezra and Nehemiah, they're um, 
King Zerubbabel. Like, that's what's going on. And then he sends those prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. And, and then there's 400 years of silence once again. And then the New Testament would begin. So this is the edge of the puzzle. This is the main blocks. If you can wrap your mind around this as Israel's history, then you can see where you are whenever you're reading different books of the Bible. You know, if you're reading Jonah, well, you're somewhere in that period of the divided monarchy. And, it's, and the judgment, Assyria, and all that, that's what's going on there. If you're reading Samuel, well, you're back before the monarchy or at the beginning of the monarchy when Saul is being raised up as king or David. Like, that's how you do it. You, you find where you are on the line, and, and that's what you're reading in the Old Testament. It gives you your lay of the land, so to speak. It makes the pieces of the puzzle make sense when you can put them in some kind of order. So on page 26, what I've given you is that, but in Scripture. So you can go through these passages. I've broken them down basically according to this timeline on page 26 and 27. If you say, I'm going to read through the Bible. Okay, well, that's great. Don't worry about it. I'm going to read through it in a year. Don't worry about that. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to read every book. Don't worry about that. If you've never done it before, here's a great way you can start. I'm going to read the story of Israel. And if you read these chapters, as I've put together here, by the time you're done, you'll have the story of Israel. It skips over a lot of the law sections. It skips over a lot of the ritual sections. It skips over the prophetic stuff that has to be situated with it. This is just the story. If you read this, you'll know the story of Israel. And if you know the story of Israel, you know the story of Jesus. And when he appears on the scene, his whole life is like a little Israel in miniature being lived out all over again. I mean, even down to him being in Egypt as a baby and coming out. He's redoing. He's, the technical term is recapitulation. He is reliving Israel's story in his own person. And so knowing this story gives you insight into Jesus' story and what he's doing and why he does what he does. 